Today we are ranking every book in the A Song of Ice and Fire series by George R. R. Martin. Now that I have officially finished my journey into this universe and I've read every single book, it feels like the right time to rank them in terms of my most favourite and my least favourite. This was such a hard list to make. All of these books are brilliant. Even the one that I've listed as the worst best book, it was still fantastic. So this was a really hard ranking list to make. And I was actually quite scared to film this video because I haven't seen anybody else place their number one book as my number one book. So I don't know if my opinion is quite controversial or not. And as always, I would love to hear what your ranking list is as well. So make sure to leave those in the comments so we can see whether or not our opinions are similar. That would be cool. This ranking list is based on my first read through. I have not reread any of these books. And I must say, I feel like this ranking list will probably change when I do reread them. Because these spots were so close and I easily could have had these books all as number one. But that's not a ranking order, so that would have been pointless. Obviously, I cannot rank Winds of Winter or A Dream of Spring because they have not been released yet. Sad. I hope one day that there will be something there for me to be able to rank. Please make it happen, George R. R. Martin. But that day may never come. So, let's crack on with it. Just to let you know, I also have reviews on my channel for every single one of these books that I'm about to talk about. I think, is there about seven or eight books? I can't do the math. <laughs> Either way, they are all on my channel and I will leave them in the description box for you as well if you want to check those out. So no matter how far down this list I have placed a book, I did actually rate all of these at least a four out of five stars. I'm quite harsh with my ratings. So for these to all be at least four stars, I've said it once and I'll say it again, George R. R. Martin is out of this world. And just as a disclaimer, there will be spoilers in this video, you have been warned. Let's start off with the worst book, the one that I have placed seventh. I feel like this one is quite a popular opinion, I feel like a lot of other people have ranked this one as the worst as well, and that has to be Fire and Blood by George R. 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 Martin. I mean, obviously, they are all by George R. R. Martin. Again, I still rated this a four out of five stars. I absolutely loved my time reading this book. The reason why I have placed it seventh is because I got a little bit bored towards the end. It's a chunky book. I got to about 550 pages in and I started to get bored. I just feel like this book has a very different writing style to all the rest. It doesn't read like a story it reads like a Wikipedia article. It's very dry, it's very matter of fact. It's just a historical account of events that happened during the Targaryen line of rulers. It's not character driven at all. It describes the events that happened, but it doesn't delve any further than that. There's not a lot of dialogue. You don't get to learn about the characters or their emotions or their motives. And it's the same as like a textbook. Like if you were interested in a world event that had happened and you needed to research about it or you needed to read up on it, this is exactly what this book would do for you. Saying that, it has some really juicy content in there. There's some crazy stuff that happens in this book and it is so entertaining in parts. And considering it took me a full 550 pages before I started to tap out, that isn't bad. I think this one was just a little bit too long. I feel like at points where it should have ended, George R. R. Martin just kept going and kept going and kept going. It's like, mate, just stop, just stop writing. You don't need to add any more to the book. It's long enough already, just stop. So for that reason, it has to be seventh place. It's also tailored towards a very niche audience. You also have to be interested in the A Song of Ice and Fire historic lore in order to enjoy any of this book. So it is last place for me. However, I did still really enjoy reading it. I was inspired to read it again because of the House of the Dragon TV show. I enjoyed it, just a bit long for me. Next up, we have number six, the book that I have ranked the second worst. Obviously, Fire and Blood is not actually like in the core storyline. This one is. So this is objectively my least favourite book in the core of Song of Ice and Fire series. And that is, drum roll please, Feast for Crows. Everybody seems to have mixed opinions on this one. Some people absolutely love this book. Other people put it as their last spot 
spot like me. I just did not enjoy this one as much as the rest in the series. And this was also the first book where George R. R. Martin split the point of view characters, so you would have half of them in this book and half of them in the next book and I just don't like that he did that. I don't really like a whole lot of the characters that are in this book. I know that in order for a story to be great and impactful, you don't have to like the characters, but I just think if I'm gonna read a book that's like 700 pages long and you're not even gonna have any of my favorite characters in it, it was just a bit difficult to get through and I wasn't as excited to pick it up and read it as I did the rest of the books in the series. Again, still a brilliant book, still really enjoyed it, just not my fave. In this book we see a lot more about Cersei and her cruel character development. She makes very poor political decisions which are just quite annoying because she's a very evil character and reading from her perspective is quite frustrating because I just don't understand how somebody can be that warped in the mind. However, I do feel like you get Jamie's redemption arc and I feel like that is why a lot of people like this book. The people who tend to rate this book as their favourite are massive Jamie stans and this is where his redemption starts to come through. He becomes a bit more of an honourable character. However, I don't like Jamie. We do see a little bit more of Brienne of Tarth in this book and I do like her. She's really cool to read from, I was rooting for her. I also enjoyed Sansa's chapters in this book. She goes on a crazy mad journey and I feel like she's had a very interesting storyline in this book. But I feel like the main focus was on the Lannisters and they're just not my faves. And by Lannisters I mean Cersei, Jaime, basically just the twins. But great book nonetheless. Next up we have fifth place and this one was really hard to rank. I'm still unsure whether or not this is fifth place. I feel like it is compared to the others. We have Dance of Dragons. So this one is in fifth spot because again, part one splits the narrative. So you only have half of the characters, the ones that weren't in Feast for Crows are in part one. And again, I just didn't really like that it was split. I would prefer everybody to be involved as a collective. However, part two for A Dance with Dragons, I rated five stars because I absolutely loved this book so, so much. But if I'm rating Dance with Dragons as a whole, it has to be fifth place for me, purely because of part one. I feel like part one drags it down. But I'm not rating the parts separately, I'm rating the book, which is this. I feel like this will be the one where I pick up on more stuff as I reread it. There's probably quite a lot that I missed out on or overlooked first read through. So this is the one that I think I'm the most excited to reread. I did find it slow paced in parts, which again is why it's fifth place, because it was a little bit slow and a little bit droney in some places. However, there are some fascinating side characters that we get to learn about in these books and it just develops them and their motives and their perspectives. And I just thought that that was really cool and really interesting. I feel like Daenerys makes some really questionable decisions in these books because she's literally doing everything she can to stay away from Westeros but she does become a little bit more integrated with the storyline. I've mentioned in previous reviews that throughout this series, Daenerys just seems really far removed, really distant from anything else that is going on. I do feel like in these books, she starts to become more integrated, which I enjoy. I feel like A Dance with Dragons also massively progresses Arya's storyline. I really like Arya, she is one of my favourite characters and I just feel like she does a lot more in these books. Her storyline again can feel a little bit slow in parts but I just feel like they start to progress her a bit in these books. A Dance with Dragons is the final instalment so far of A Song of Ice and Fire and it does leave it on a little bit of a cliffhanger at the end. But it's not so much of a cliffhanger that I can't cope. I can definitely cope with it and I can definitely wait. I don't wanna have to wait for too much longer, but I feel like I'm going to have to. I feel like in A Dance with Dragons, we also get a lot more in regards to like the evil, cruel characters. We learn more about Ramsay Bolton. We have Euron Greyjoy, Crow's Eye. There's also the Young Griff storyline that starts to come into fruition. Fruition? That's not how you say that word. <laughs> Interesting foundations for Winds of Winter to build upon trickled into Dance with Dragons. Really, really loved this book, but it's fifth spot for me. So now we move on to fourth place, and this is where I feel like it gets a little bit controversial, because the book that I've ranked fourth place, I feel like is the majority of people's top book in the series. This book has been described as 
the best book ever written in fantasy. That is A Storm of Swords. I can see why this is people's top book. There is so much stuff that happens in this installment of the series. It is juicy, it's jam-packed, it's fast-paced. And I feel like this book is very influential and you learn a lot more about the characters. Firstly, you've got The Red Wedding, which is probably one of the most emotional chapters I've ever read in a book ever. It was that type of chapter where you just have to sit and process before you move on. Like I couldn't read the next chapter after it because I was just a bit stunned. Um, hello. Oh, you done me a cuppa, thank you. And for the Red Wedding alone, I was so close to putting this at third place. It almost went up a spot because that chapter is probably the best written chapter. Obviously, I have not read every single book that has ever been published in the entire world, but I would say that that chapter is close to being the best ever. Number four does personally feel a little bit far down this list, but I'm also happy with the ones that I ranked above it. So it's just, I don't know, if I could tie this in third place, I would, but I can't, so I won't. Again, I mentioned a bit earlier, but Daenerys feels very far removed in these books. She doesn't really feel like she's got a whole lot going on. Again, I feel like A Storm of Swords helps people get used to Jaime or start to see his redemption arc, start to connect that character a little bit more. People automatically like to place this as number one spot because Joffrey dies and I think that's a worthy reason. So happy, I don't think I've ever smiled more in my entire life other than my wedding day when Joffrey died. We've also got the death of Jon Snow's babe Egret. Oh, again, that was another chapter that was really hard to read. There's a lot of emotional stuff going on in Storm of Swords. Jon Snow becomes Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. I forgot that that happens in this book as well. You get some more development from Samuel Tarly. He's a really interesting perspective to read from. You get the introduction of Lady Stoneheart in the epilogue. Goodness, there is so much stuff that happens in A Storm of Swords. What a journey this book takes you through. But that is my fourth spot. We have my third place spot now. I feel like this is an okay ranking for this book. That is A Game of Thrones. What an influential book this is. This book will always have a place in my heart because it got me hooked into fantasy and into A Song of Ice and Fire. There's always a lot of pressure for the first book in a series because that is the book that makes you want to continue reading. And there are a lot of series out there that have quite a poor first book, but the series just keeps getting better. But a lot of people don't give it a chance because the first book is so awful. Akatar, I'm thinking about you. A Game of Thrones is the perfect first book to a series ever. This book got me hooked. It makes you want to read the next book straight away. There was not a single fraction of my mind that was wondering whether or not I should read the next book. Every part of my being wanted to read it and that is because of this one. Ned Stark's death really sets the scene that you cannot expect anything in A Song of Ice and Fire. You just never know what's around the corner, you never know what's gonna happen, and there's no plot armour. I think that's important because that goes against what a lot of other books do. They always like to keep the hero alive, there always is a happy ending, there's always plot armour. As soon as Ned Stark dies, you realise that that is not the case for A Song of Ice and Fire, and that alone makes you want to continue reading. There's also the really delicate use of magic and fantasy elements, which I enjoy. It doesn't overuse it. It doesn't throw it in your face. It feels very realistic. This book mainly focuses on the Stark family all being pulled in different directions and the start of their journeys. And I just thoroughly love this book so much. And I think reading this again, after I've just finished the whole series, I think it's gonna be impactful. So that is my third place book. We're on to the top two. What's it gonna be? So this one is controversial, but this is my second place spot, and that is A Clash of Kings. When I did my review for this book, I did say it was my favorite out of the series, and some people did disagree, and that is fine. A lot of people said that they found it slow paced and a little bit drony. I've said that about a few of the other books. I will agree that I suppose there isn't like the most action packed stuff that happens. Storm of Swords is definitely more action packed. But the reason why I love this book so much is because it deals with the aftermath of Ned Stark's death and it just shows how the whole the whole realm is impacted, essentially. This is where I became connected to the characters. This book is the reason why I have my favorite characters and why I could pick 
who I like the most. This book is where I started to have all of my emotions involved in A Song of Ice and Fire. I think it's because of the amount of development. It basically focuses on world building. I feel like this book really allowed me to understand more about the world and the universe that George R. R. Martin has created the locations, the different houses, the characters, and that just makes it more emotive for me because I just feel so connected to this fictional world. It also helps you understand the setup for the rest of the series. I feel like Clash of Kings has a lot of foundations that are necessary for the rest of the plots to unravel from. We also introduce Stannis's storyline quite well in Clash of Kings. It deepens him as a character, which I really enjoyed. We've also got Renly's death, I really enjoyed reading about that, really interesting. In this book, you've got Arya being given that significant coin that will allow her storyline to flourish and allow her to become the badass that she truly is. We get introduced to Davos Seaworth in his first point of view chapters. We learn more about Tyrion's values, his views of love, his past, how he's treated by other people. Theon betrays the Starks in A Clash of Kings. And there's a lot more context and a lot more reference to the historical past. And I liked the change in pace. I found it refreshing after a Game of Thrones and I do feel like this was mainly focused on world building, which I just really like, that works for me. I also particularly like that in Clash of Kings, this is where Sansa's views and her fairy tale dreams start to become tarnished and her hope starts to diminish because of the amount of cruelty and torture that she is subjected to. We're not gonna talk about the state of this book, it's just very well loved, okay? But this is my favorite out of the core of Song of Ice and Fire books in the series and second place. So let's talk about my first and top spot, which by now you've probably guessed what it is. But if you haven't, don't worry, because I'm about to tell you. Now this one I do think is controversial. Most people do not put this as their top spot, but I just couldn't not. It's a five star read for me. I don't rate five stars very often. I don't know if I was just in a really great place in my life when I read this book. I don't know, but I just had the best time reading it. And I look back on it so fondly, and I only read it, what, like a couple of months ago, and I already want to reread it. I just loved everything about this, and I could not complain. To me, it has no faults, and that is A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. This is my favourite George R.R. R. Martin book. Call me crazy, I'm aware of it. I had really low expectations before reading this book, and I shouldn't have. So it's split into three novellas based on this amazing duo called Dunk and Egg. They are such a cute pairing. I think they are the perfect partnership. These novellas are very light-hearted, but it's very true to the A Song of Ice and Fire historic lore. And it's just a completely different writing style. It's so different to the A Song of Ice and Fire books, and it's so different to Fire and Blood. It's really witty, it's really light-hearted, it's actually quite funny, which I wouldn't say A Song of Ice and Fire is. Like, there's not really a lot in there that's for comedic effect. I feel like this book has all of that in there. But it's not silly. It's not like a stupid, silly, funny book. The characters are extremely likeable and it's actually really wholesome. So you've got Dunk who I think he's in his 20s. He's a young man anyway. And all he wants to do is be a true knight. That is all he wants, all he cares about. And then he's got his little companion, his squire, Egg, who is actually Egg on Targaryen. And he is this little boy. And they're just so funny. Egg's so bolshy. He's sarcastic. He says whatever is on his mind. It gets him into quite a bit of trouble. And they just go on so many adventures. And I just loved reading this book so much. I love a book where you can connect to the characters and this fulfilled that perfectly for me. I just wanna read more by them. I wanna read more about their adventures. But after Winds of Winter. I just think that this is some of George R. R. Martin's best work. It's brilliantly written. And I have to give a massive thank you to the person who recommended that I read this because it was actually a YouTube comment who suggested this book to me. It might even be my favorite book of 2024 so far. And I don't think that that's gonna change. So overall, I rated Fire and Blood as the worst and A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms as the best. And in terms of the core books of A Song of Ice and Fire, I rated Feast for Crows the worst and The Clash of Kings as the best. That's my ranking. I am happy with that. I think the ones in the middle I was a little bit unsure of because some of them I could have easily evolved rated the same. 
but I am more excited to know what your ranking list is. It will probably be different to mine, so make sure to leave me a comment so that we can keep this conversation going. I want to do a video as well ranking different characters, so maybe getting every single point of view character in A Song of Ice and Fire and just ranking them. If you think that that would be a good idea, then let me know. And if you've got any other recommendations of what you want to see me film, again, I'm always open to suggestions. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up to let me know. And if you like my content and you want to see more from me, then please subscribe because it's free and it means that you can see my videos easier. I will see you next time, or rather you'll see me, and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye for now.